All right, so we're going to continue with the topic of diffusion. This is the second diffusion lecture. And there is a reading that is posted on Blackboard. It's Phil Potts, Chapter 5. And it's a, it's a bit dense, so it's not a lot of pages, 74 to 77. Um, that covers parts of the last lecture and this lecture as well. It goes into um, some three, sort of the, the 3D uh, solutions to the diffusion equations. Um, which we're just kind of in, in, the, in the lecture here, we're just thinking about the x direction really. Um, and it also refers to, um, so we, we referred to CP as specific heat. There's different, apparently, different conventions for, um, or what names for this term. So we called it specific heat um, here. Uh, he uses the term heat capacity, which my understanding is in general, heat capacity means something somewhat different, but uh, as I mentioned in the last lecture, but the effectively, he's using the same um, the same term CP and, and it means the same thing as what we mean it to mean there's just different words for it um, so you don't need to worry about that but it's just a note okay so if you think back to the previous lecture um, imagine Two locations. Okay, so this is the ground. We have we have at location A and location B, and some magma comes up and brings introduces a, a lot of heat uh, underneath location A. And so the question is, where we, where would be a better place to if we wanted to harness geothermal energy um, where would be a better place to to so drill so basically you drill a hole and you and um, send water down and water comes up hot so you know pretty obviously uh, the place where the hot magma is near would be the place you'd want to uh, make your ge geothermal energy plant. For example, Iceland has all that magma and lots of lots of cheap electricity because of geothermal energy. Um, but we can think about it more, uh, a little bit more deeply. If you think about the, and, and, and specifically answer this question, in relationship to the equation that we learned last time. So if you think about uh, contours of constant temperature, if you go down a ways, you're going to get to 100 degrees, and it's going to get down to 200 degrees. It heats up as you go down. This is well known from mining. As you go down, it can get actually pretty warm down there. And granite might have been at a temperature of like, maybe this, maybe this granite's at 500 degrees. So you can imagine, so previously, before the granite was there, um, 500 degrees was at some deeper level. This is a tree, this is supposed to be a tree here. Maybe it'll add some green to it. Um, okay, so uh, 500 degrees, you know, Right at the moment this magma appears, that contour would, would do something like that, right? Um, and all of these are going to be kind of, kind of bent up. Oops. 
like that. So the 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 point here is that if you were to look at the gradient in temperature, for example, sorry about that. Um, there's a steeper gradient, right? From from this distance, from the surface down to here, we're we're going 500 degrees in about half the distance that we're going here. So just reviewing that equation, we had we said that the, the heat the heat flux was equal to some some constant times this dt dx so that's that's different in these two cases so what that tells us is if we have a, a larger heat flux so uh, this is larger for for a than b right there's a more temperature change in the same length for A. So heat, flu heat flux will be larger. So J bigger at location A. Okay, so that's that's a sort of more mathematical answer to the question of which place where is more heat going to be coming out? More heat's going to be coming out at A because the gradient in temperature is steeper. So what we want to move into today is this is an, is a different question, which is intuitively looking at this situation, I've already implied that there, there may be some temporal variation, right? If this magma intrudes, um, if you're at some point like here, you know, probably at first, there's, you're far enough away from, from it that the heat wouldn't get to you yet, right? But after some period of time, the heat's going to radiate out. So that's like I, you know, I put a I put a pot of soup on the stove. And I turn the heat on high. Like the soup isn't instantly hot, right? There's some some delay in time, and it depends where I am in the soup. And then, so so this equation doesn't deal with time. I mean, it does it a little bit. It's right how much heat per per time, but it's a, it's a snapshot. So, so fix, so I'm using these interchangeably. Fix law, which is actually probably more, more um, accurately, it should have said Fourier's law last time. So Fourier's law is specific to heat transfer and fix law is, is the same equation, but applied to, um, uh, mass. So, for example, there was a, a statue where they put, um, so this is, let's just get clear on this, this is for heat. So I should say, I should be talking about Fourier's law. Um, so, for example, Fick's law, um, there's a statue where they, where someone made, put two, two sheets of metal, different kinds of metal, next to each other. Um, and over time, a little bit, you know, if you had gold and silver, for example, that's not what was used because someone would steal it and it'd be too expensive. But a uh, little, you know, one atom at a time, a little bit of silver is going to mix in with the gold and a little bit of gold is going to mix in with the silver. And it follows the same, uh, the same differential equation uh, that Fourier's law does for heat. So... Apologies for switching those last time. But in either case, these don't 
describe temporal evolution. So at any given location, we would expect, you know, when we when we change the the, the scenario, we introduce this this heat in some area. Uh, this this gradient is going to change with time and position, and that's not. This, this would account for any, any little snapshot in time, how much heat is moving. Um, but it doesn't capture the overall evolution. And the other thing that's not, that's, that's missing here, it, um, these also don't account for heat capacity, right? or specific heat as we're calling it. Right, so this should matter too, right? If, if, if you put a, um, a thing that takes a lot of heat before it changes temperature um, near the granite, like if the rock has the property of um, having a high specific heat, that's gonna change, that's clearly gonna affect how these um, uh, isotherms, these gradient, these lines of constant temperature, how they, um, how long they take to move. Okay, so we need, we need a different equation to, to describe the, the, the evolution over time. So let's, Let's suppose we have temperature here, and we have distance, and we're going to put two substances at different temperatures next to each other. So we have distance x, and we're going to have something at one temperature T1, and right next to it, touching it, we're going to have something at temperature T2. So that's intended to be a straight line. That's our situation. So, so what, what's going to affect the temperature evolution? So maybe pause for a moment and think about this. <clears throat> We're looking for an equation um, that describes how the temperature is going to change in this situation. So I think clearly thermal conductivity that we talked about last time should should be important, like how 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 quickly does the does the heat energy move through material? That's gonna that's gonna affect the evolution here. The time, how long it how long you wait is gonna matter. The difference in temperature is gonna matter, and also position, right? If you're if you're sitting very close, if you're if you're the the cold end, and this hot things come comes next very close you're going to warm up a lot faster than if you're miles away, right? So the distance is, is going to matter. And heat capacity, or sp sorry, specific heat um, is going to be important as well, as I mentioned a minute ago. 
So, and possibly something, some other things, um, but these seem like major ones. So, this brings us to what's called the transient heat flow equation. And specifically, we're, this is for like a one-dimensional diffusion. And as I said before, if you want to do 2D or 3D, you just add a couple terms that look the same otherwise. OK, so that equation, and we're not going to derive it like we did last time. Um, but it's, it says, it's in the book. Um, so this, you can, you can refer to. Um, Sorry, in the in the reading, Phil Potts, pages seventy-five to seventy-six. Um, so the change in temperature with time is equal to a new constant, which is small k, times the curvature of temperature with distance. And the new constant, or k, small k, is um, the constant we used before, thermal conductivity, divided by a specific heat and divided by density. So we didn't, we didn't, we, we should add density here. Um, okay, so k, little k is, this, this new constant is something called thermal diffusivity as units of meters squared per second. And gives the temperature change in a unit volume by heat flow. So it's it's one of these constants that's getting we're getting deep enough into the equations are getting complicated enough that that the therm, that the thermal diffusivity is a little bit hard to wrap your mind around intuitively. So um, so don't worry about trying to like fully grasp what that what that what that means but relative to um, um, thermal conductivity. It's a little, little easier to grasp specific heat and density. These all three come together and um, are what matters for for the situation of uh, heat evolution over time. Okay, so that's that's the, that's what the constant is, um, and for the case of rocks, rocks um, most of them have a relatively constant ten to the minus six meters squared per second value. That's both for rocks and magmas. And um, let's just think about let's this. Just think about this. It's kind of like we did last. Kind of like we did last time. time. Um, in terms of like, in terms of like, like does, 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 does this, how does this, this, how does this make sense? sense? How can we understand this equation? Okay, so it's saying that. So it's saying that um, um, the temperature the change. Temperature change. How, how quickly the how quickly the temperature place. changes at a place. It's gonna be it's gonna be proportional to proportional to uh, uh, the thermal conductivity. The thermal conductivity. So, so if the heat if move around heat quickly, move around quickly. So if K is so large, K is large, then the temperature then changes the temperature more changes. More that, that makes sense. That, that makes sense. 
and the denominator we have just we have just taking these terms, taking these terms. And the denominator, we have, have, the denominator, we, denominator we have um, um, specific keys. So, so, so if this if the material if the material is sluggish, is sluggish, and you have to have plenty of heat in order to in order to temperature to change, temperature to change, that's going to slow things. That's going to slow things down. So, okay, so uh, larger, larger heat, specific, specific heat, heat, smaller change. So that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. And then you have density here. Density here. Um, um, that one's a little bit harder to grasp, I think, intuitively, but it makes sense to me that it, sense it, it, it that seems kind of related to this kind of like into like, the like, There's less more mass, so it's going to take, so it's gonna take if you have a lot of mass, lot of mass to, to, get that, to get that things temperature to change. Um, to change. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go slower when there's more mass, so that makes sense to be down there as well. And then. Um, and then we have the second derivative of temperature with respect to distance. So this is this term basically says, okay, if well, let's think of a case if if you had uh, temperature and distance, if you had uh, no no change, no curvature, um, or you had a change, but no curvature, um, the temperature is not going to change. That's what this says, this part, right? So if this is zero, this is zero in both in both of these cases. Um, you know, ob pretty obviously here, there's there's no reason that the temperature would change in here um, as well. So this, for example, would be the case we looked at last time. So we were, let's say that we had this is our, um, you know, we had this thing. We had we had two different temperatures and and the heat 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 was flowing through it, right? Um, so maybe this is temperature one. And then over here, it's at temperature two. So that's gonna. What will happen eventually is there'll be a. Let's say these are. Um, you know, this is inside your house. Your heater's going. You're keeping your temperature at a constant temperature. Actually, let's. Yeah. Okay. It's 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 gonna be our air conditioning because it's cooler. And outside, it's hot. Okay. So eventually, the, your wall is just gonna have this gradient in temperature. Um, and it's going to be the same. So it's not going to change, right? It's going to the situation isn't going to change. The temperature isn't going to change. So that's why what what, what causes it to change when when the temperature is going to change is say um, when like if you had a situation where with distance, you know, your temperature was, let's say you had like something like that, right? So it's it's cold over here, cold over here, and it's hot in the middle. Okay, so intuitively you can imagine, okay, over time that's, you know, the warmer places are gonna cool, the cooler places are gonna warm, and you're gonna get, you're gonna even things out over time. So this would be um, initial time, and then this would be later. Okay, so it's the it's the curvature, and the and the more the more sharp that is, maybe you can see that intuitively as well. If we were to introduce something, if this is temperature, and we have we had like a super sharp change in temperature, right? That is going to change. That that situation is going to change a lot faster than than this one. This is like um, when you're when you're frying pan is super hot, it cools down. That changes, it doesn't stay super hot very long, right? But then it's warm for quite a long time, right? That's because um, it's more of the situation of a, of a gradual, the difference between the temperature of the pan and the air is relatively small. The curvature at the, at the boundary between the pan and the air is relatively small compared to when it's really hot. All right. 
so what uh, if we go back to this this situation here um, we can draw out So we have our T1, temperature 1, temperature 2. So what's going to happen over time, so this will be uh, time equals 0. And let's say that we, um, let's just do an example. Let's, let's fix one of these, okay? So uh, we'll call this, let's see, temperature is a function of distance at a distance x from what we're going to call an infinite heat sink. At time t And here, so this is a general equation. So this equation, this transient heat flow equation, is valid for any, any scenario. So this, this is just one scenario. Um, and so each scenario has its own solution. So this one, is given by another equation, which is that temperature minus T2 divided by the difference in temperature is equal to 1 minus something called the air function of distance divided by 2. There's our constant. So I need to explain a couple things here. Okay, the first of all is what is an infinite heat sink. Um, so what that means, let's see. So an infinite heat sink doesn't change temperature. It's like, like the ocean, for example. Um, if you put a, if you took a hot frying pan and threw it in the ocean, the ocean's temperature is not changing. Okay. So, I mean, it is it is some infinitesimal amount, but for, for all practical purposes, it's not changing. So that's what we mean by an infinite uh, heat sink, sort of at the scale of the problem. Uh, so let's say, let's make this T1, um, this is our So over here, we have our infinite heat sink. So this could be our like our frying pan. This this material over here. Um, this is going to be our our thing that, and it's going to cool in this case, right? Because it's, it was initially hotter, but it's stuck next to this thing that that absorbs all the heat and 
it just disappears. So um, over time, you could say, okay, right away, if you're right, if, if you're right next to it, you're going to cool down, but so this would be, this is just kind of working through this intuitively. This would be like, okay, so T equals like one second. And then you can imagine over time, more and more that heat is going to diffuse into into the heat sink. Okay, so over time, then maybe eventually it's going to reach the same temperature. So this would be T equals one, two, three, four. So this would be you know, whatever. I don't know what these units are: hours, days, million years. Um, this this solution applies to all these different scales, right? Of whatever distance we use, whatever time we use, it could be seconds, it could be millions of years. All right. Um, the other thing I need to mention here is the air function, and this is just a this is just a function. It's like the sine or the cosine, that kind of thing. You can use it. You can put a number in an Excel. It'll give you a value. It's a stat it's a statistical um, term, and we're not going to really worry too much about. Um, the details of it, um, but you can look up. You can either look in a table, of different values, or uh, you can type them into Excel. So, this equation here describes the math of these lines. The, Putting this equation into Excel or solving it by hand, you can you can uh, find at any given position and any given time. So there's your position and there's your time. Based on the different temperatures of the two things, it will tell you uh, this is this is what you're solving for. It'll tell you the temperature at any position and at any time. So, and as we go forward, we'll uh, um, practice with this equation, and we'll also try. Uh, this is for one. This is for one situation, right? It's the situation of the infinite heat sink. You can imagine other other scenarios. Um, so, a couple notes. So the temperature in in the heat sink doesn't change. Let's call this let's call this x equals zero. Okay, this would be one, minus one, etc. Uh, the temperature at x equals zero. doesn't change. So this is something I'm just intuitively that I drew here. Um, and so we, we could check that, right? So try try typing in earth, earth of, of zero. Um, and it should work out that um, the temperature will be T1. No matter what, it doesn't matter what time it is. Um, and another thing to note here is that at large distances, to B, there's no change. large or long I should say long okay so basically that's this it's saying like okay if we're 
if we're very far away, um, it's not really going to be affected by this. Okay, so we're gonna. I'm going to come back with a an example uh, calculation um, that you can you can try this equation out. Um, we'll either do that in class or it'll be a separate video. Um, but I'll leave you here for now.